Oh, hi. I am tired, y'all, but I had an idea and also found the most incredible jewelry finding and had to revisit a project I've done previously. Also, yeah, it's spring. Eyes are irritated. I'm gonna do a bunch of squinting. If you can't handle that, most of this is B-roll anyway. So years ago, I made not the best version of a Hermione Granger drawstring bag. N this is also not the best version. I didn't add any adornments to that one and was afraid of doing buttonholes. This is a braver move and it is a better made bag. Practice makes progress. Mm -hmm. I decided to use up some of the seed beads that I have to make essentially like a little tassel for the bottom of the bag. So I took this cording that came with the seed bead kit. I dug out my stash of seed beads, which I did a whole video on storing in pill boxes. I had a shitload of seed beads. Cause listen, my mom used to work at a craft store and uh, I, I can't pay attention long enough to stick with the same craft for too long. Have I mentioned that I recently got diagnosed with ADHD? So much makes sense. Also anxiety and depression, but I would imagine even as a casual viewer, you may have picked up on one or both of those. But hey, at least I know, you know, I'm gonna be starting some variety of therapy soon. I'm, I'm getting my ducks in a row. It's stressful making phone calls, but we're heading there. So I took a really thin sewing needle that had a pretty small eye, which is a pain in the dick with how thick this thread is. I could have used thinner monofilament, like fishing line or something, that probably would have been fine. I did want movement, so I didn't want to use wire or like the stem jewelry findings. I didn't want it to be too rigid. So I just picked an assortment of beads to string on here. I spent a very long time last night watching Taskmaster and stringing beads, and it was actually pretty calming. I have always feared the bead, but this brought me a lot of joy, at least in the short term, so I think I'm gonna try to include it in some more projects coming up. Oh god, they just add so much flair. So I got my arrangement of beads and then I added one charm, but you can also do this with a bead where I threaded the string through once and then started looping the needle back up through all the beads, if that's making sense. So you're making a big U shape but you're only going through that bottom bead or charm one time where everything else gets the thread going through it twice. So you should have two strands sticking out at the top. And I left those kind of long because as with a lot of things, I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants figuring out how to make this tassel. And I came up with a solution, not the most elegant, shall we say. Also, hold on. Because it's the Hermione bag, can we talk about how fucking perfect this little time turner charm is? I mean, okay, it's just like a sand timer. What are those called? The only one I can picture myself using is from the game Scategories. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, seemed appropriate for a Hermione bag. So that's kind of what inspired this whole endeavor in the first place. But I have one of these little clamps that you close with a flat head pliers. That's not what they're called, but we're gonna call them that. <laughs> I did have to take the sewing needle and re-thread some of the strands to feed it through that clamp, but I did get all of my strands through. I think I'll handle this a little differently for future tassels I may make, but I got it to work. It's okay. Then yeah, I clamped it shut so none of the strands were going anywhere, and then I fed that entire clump through this bigger bead, and then once that was through the top, I realized I needed to make a loop somehow, and I, I didn't know how to tackle it. So this is my like least attractive part of the bag, I think, where I'm so proud of so much of the rest of this, but I, I wish I had had some more forethought for this part. But hey, I'm learning things. Apparently that's an ADHD thing, is you can only think so far ahead. <laughs> where as you've seen over the years, I have a lot of trouble with that. The only way to get through that is to practice. So here we are. It was my first time. It's not the worst. I tried burning all the ends together, but it's not nylon string or anything. So it didn't really want to melt like that. It just kind of kept burning. So I looped it through a jump ring, stuffed as much of the ends as I could back down into that bigger bead. So that made a loop. And then I started wrapping just some floral wire around where had I had maybe a bigger clamp, like the one I used below the big bead, that would have been ideal. I know there's like proper jewelry making clamps. I just kind of have a slapdash collection of things and I'm trying to use that up. So if this is a road I continue down, I will look into more professional things. Uh, feel free to talk about it that in the comments though, if, if you like jewelry making and there are findings that you swear by, like I would love to know more cause I'm very basic with the jewelry that I do know how to make. Anyways, I actually really like how this tassel came out, especially when I make sure this bead is up over the floral wire a bit. I'm just really happy with it. And then I got some matching beads to put here. Right, so here's the fabric I made the bag with. There's this purple velvet that my lovely dear fairy god Cheryl sent me. I think the time turner thingies are also from her. And then leftover from my goon cosplay from last year, which I am going to fix the burn hole on the front of that skirt with doing some like very rough looking patches all over the outfit though, because I think that will suit 
the costume very well. So I'm I'm excited to finally get good photos of that costume, but it needs a little zhuzhing and weathering, shall we say. Intentional weathering, not the accidental burn hole I put right in the fucking dead center front of the skirt. Anyway, it's this kind of black silky fabric and that'll be the lining. So I found a big round thing to trace. This is where I keep all my felts, just like a kind of weird looking storage box I found in a Cape Cod thrift store probably six or seven years ago. And I found this ribbon that I very brazenly just took my lighter to and melted one of the ends. Thankfully it did melt properly, but this, this could have gone wrong. Look at the content of the fabric you're trying to burn before you light it on fire. Just a little safety precaution. <laughs> so yes, I traced the same size circle on both pieces of fabric and I in fact ironed all of the fabric beforehand to take care of any shrinking and like to make it look nice. Look at us upping our standards for the shit we're making ourselves. <laughs> so then I made a mark on the outer layer, the velvet, that would be past where the seam allowance was gonna go when I attached these two together. And then I added a buttonhole just on the single layer. So there it is a little ways in from the edge and then I cut it open so that, you know, we can use it. Not just decorative. Then I had the silky side up of the lining and the flocked side of the velvet, the fuzzy side of the velvet down. So I sewed it right side together around the edge and I left a gap so that we could then flip it right sides out. Then I did like an edge stitch, I guess. I got very, very close to the edge of the circle once it was flipped out. Top stitching, I guess, but I think there's a specific distance in that that's supposed to be versus edge stitching. I don't know. I should know, but I don't know. As long as my words are helping communicate to you what the fuck I did, then we're good. And that closed the gap also when I went around. Then I did a second row of stitching a little further in. So I used the bottom of the buttonhole as a guide for that. And then went around one more time. So we were making a casing for the ribbon to go through. Then pick your favorite threading method to put the ribbon through the casing. And then I very clumsily added the big beads that I showed you a second ago, just so that when you open the bag, the strands don't get pulled back through. Is that not the worst thing to happen to a hooded sweatshirt? Like if, if you have your hoodie and you know, when they don't stay in even length and then you go to like stretch the hood out and one gets sucked up like a string of spaghetti, soul crushing. <laughs> and then yeah, you go from having your flat circle to a little dice bag. You can add actual dice to it, kind of the perfect size. That was the intention of this. I only have this one set of dice, which are gorgeous. I know they don't match the bag. And then this is me remembering that I didn't add the tassel that I spent about three hours working on, if not more. So I just found the center of the bag and then stitch it through the jump ring like you would attach a button. It's a lot of anchoring stitches. I tend to go overboard with this stuff, but I don't want something like that falling off and then being upset that I didn't add more stitches, so. Not too bad of a project. Other than the beading, this went very quickly. Making the actual bag took no time at all. So if you already have fringe or something that you want to make into a tassel or just omit the tassel and have a plain ass dice bag, that's also fine. I'm just glad I finally made the cinched up from a flat circle into a closed up dice bag that I had been picturing years ago and couldn't execute as well. So this feels a lot better and I'm really, really pumped about it. These strands do seem a little long for this, but then, you know, it, it's a big circle it pulls out into and I want it to be able to lay flat so that when you have your dice on it, it's is like a little bowl. So I don't know what the solution is for that. If you have thoughts about dice bags, let me know. Oh boy, I am quickly losing any and all steam that I had for today, but I still have some Patreon gifts to put together for May. I'm getting a little ahead of myself working on them, but I'm like chomping at the bit, champing at the bit, chomping at the bit to get these made because I'm so excited about the thing I have going. So mail time perk folks are getting, if it goes okay, I may have to pivot if this doesn't turn out well, but uh, maybe my favorite art I've ever created sent their way. And I also have some very fun custom shit tier perk stuff happening. So it is because of my patrons that any of this is even possible. So thank them. I just, yeah, am the luckiest bean just like the coolest that I get to make stuff and then revisit stuff down the road just because I want to see if I can make it better and like have markers in my improvement and my skills and everything. Like you all make that possible. So I appreciate you all so, so much. Before I fall asleep where I'm sitting, I'm gonna go. I will see you all back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Okay, I had to pause everything because this was happening and I have a rule, if this is happening, I have to stop everything I'm doing and just witness the cute. Don't forget kids, fuck JK Rowling. If you wanna buy Harry Potter stuff, support small creators, especially trans ones.